We have been examining our polynomial functions this unit, and today we're going to look at um, being able to determine the degree of a polynomial function from its finite differences, uh, and then also to predict the value of the leading coefficient based on the finite difference that we get. So what we're going to do here is you're going to complete the table of values using graphing technology to help you and calculate the difference in the value of y. So when I say using graphing technology, what I would like you to do is put the equation into Desmos. I mean, you could do the, the uh, calculating yourself. Um, if you put the, the equation into Desmos, um, in the top corner where you put the equation, there's that gear symbol, uh, the gear symbol in the top corner. If you tap on that, it's going to pop up um, some little headings uh, in your equation and one looks like a table of values if you tap on that table of values it will then bring up a table of values for for that particular equation that you've entered um, and if it doesn't go far enough with your table of values uh, for example if it only stops at the two here and you want a three you can just tap your finger by by where the next number would go in and type in the number you want and then it pops out the value that you you need here. So if you if you do that or if you just do the calculation of three times the, the negative two and subtract two you would get negative eight. Three times negative one is negative three subtract two is negative five. I mean you can calculate these but when you get into some of the more complex ones like F or G or H then you might want to speed up the process using Desmos to do that. Um, I'm just gonna work my way through this one here and then show you what, or remind you what we mean by differences here. Um, to do your difference, we're taking a look at these y coordinates and we take the one on the bottom, so we pair them up, take the one on the bottom and subtract the one above it. So negative five take away negative eight is positive three. So our first difference here is three. Or you can think of it this way, which I kinda like because um, I find students are less likely to make a sign error on this. Um, if you're going from eight to negative 5, you have to go up 3. Okay, you're actually increasing by 3. And then to go from negative 5 to negative 2, again, you're increasing by 3, or it's a positive 3 there. So calculate your differences. Um, if you get a constant difference, you're done. Um, in some of these, though, like when you get to this one, we know that linear relationships ha should have the first differences all being the same. When you get to a quadratic, based on what we've known in the past, like these two, part B and part C are quadratic, D is quadratic, um, we know something about our differences there. We know it's our second differences, so we could calculate our first differences. We're going to find there's a pattern there, but then when we do the differences of the differences, so um, you're going to keep calculating your differences until you get that constant amount. So quadratics we know have a second difference that's constant. So take some time, fill in the charts, and get the constant difference for each of these. All right, looking at the first three charts here, we know that our first differences are constant here and they all give a value of three. Now, you'll know there's a relationship there that we've talked about. As long as your x is increasing at a constant rate, this first difference that's constant will be equivalent to the slope. So there was a relationship here between our difference and our leading coefficient for our linear function. If I look at my uh, first quadratic one, which is part b here, the second differences are all negative 2, and my leading coefficient here is a negative 1. So my difference was negative, my leading coefficient is negative, but they don't exactly match. The signs match, but the numbers don't match. And in part C, my constant second difference is a 4. It's positive. My leading coefficient here is a positive as well, but this time it's, it's a 2, not a 4. So what we're going to do is look for some patterns happening here. All right, try your, your next three, and you can go to the next slide to get them. Page 1 here, part B. Um, I had negative 1 times a 2, so my lead coefficient was negative 1. If I times that by 2, multiply that by 2, I get negative 2. My lead coefficient here for part C was a 2. If I do 2 times a 2, that looks like it's giving me 4. Ta-da! 
Um, let's predict this one. I know it's on the next page. There's a 3. It is quadratic. So 3 times the 2 for this one would give us a 6. Was that difference a constant difference of positive 6? There we go. Hit the right button this time. All right, let's see what we have here. The exponent was a 2. So here's my exponent value of 2. So the lead coefficient it looks like times 2. The lead coefficient times 2. The exponent was 2. Here, my exponent is a 3. But the number I was working with on this one for my difference, my constant difference was 1 times 6. This was a 2 times 6. Where this 6 is coming from is kind of fancy. If I take 3, which is my degree, and times it by the 2, the degree ahead of that or before that, that's where I'm getting a 6 from. So lead coefficient times 3 times 2 is how I can calculate those constant differences. Now let's go back again. Okay, looking at our values here, I had a second difference that is constant. That means it's quadratic, a degree 2. Um, I had a positive 6 value and my lead coefficient was 3. Here's my first cubic function in part e, and you'll notice it was the third differences that are constant. Its value is 6, and the leading coefficient this time is just a 1. Uh, again, part f, it's a cubic. My third differences are constant, and my leading coefficient is a 2, but this time it's 12. Huh. Okay, so a 1 lead coefficient had a constant difference of 6. A 2 as a leading coefficient had a constant value of 12. So this 12 really is the 2, maybe the lead coefficient of 2, times the constant difference of 6. So cubic functions maybe always have a multiple of 6 as its constant difference. I wonder if that's true with my quadratics. Let's take a quick peek here. Um, let's go back to part B. Why, by golly gee, it is. Hmm, I'm seeing a pattern. I'm hoping you are too. Let's see what we can do with the next cubic down here. E and F were cubics, and it looked like it was the lead coefficient times the 6 to get that constant difference. If I do my lead coefficient of negative 3 and times 6, yipper, I get negative 18. All right. Now I wonder how the 6 relates to the degree. Because de degree 3 seem to go with 6. Degree 2 seem to go with 2. Degree 1 seem to go with a 1. Degree 4, let's see what we have here for degree 4. We have a 24. My lead coefficient was a 1, so it must be maybe a 1 times 24. But how does 24 relate to the exponent of 4? Okay, I'm going to tell you something here. Let's flip back again to the first one, first slide. If I look at a degree, where are we here? Degree 3 times 2, degree 4. So if I did 4 times the one before it, which is 3, that's 12, times the one before that, hmm, double 12, I get 24. Now when you take a number, and this is kind of cool because this is one of the only places data management overlaps with MCT4C. Um, we're going to get our talk about this and uh, the data kids have already figured out that if you have a, whole, a natural number, like a whole number, not negative, uh, they're the ones you naturally learn how to count when you're little, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. If you want to start at a number and multiply it by every number before it, down to 1, there's a quick way to write it. So this 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 4, and then we're really excited, so we put an exclamation mark there. That's called factorial, and 4 factorial means 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now you can just put that in your calculator as 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or you can look for a button on your calculator. It's usually a second function um, function on your calculator. So you want to look for, um, mine has like an N with an exponent, or not exponent, with an exclamation mark. Um, and on my calculator, I put in the 4 and then I do my shift to access that shift, and then one of my buttons to access that, and that should give me 24. If you can't find it, let me know and I'll help you with that. So there's a relationship here that we can work with. 
Okay, we're going to summarize our things here. What relationship do you notice between the difference that is constant and the degree of the polynomial? So we know first degree functions, linear functions, have the first difference that's constant. A second degree, a quadratic, have the second differences that are constant. The cubics, degree three, have the third differences constant, and so on. So I'm going to type up that relationship here. Okay, so the degree tells you which differences will be constant. For example, a degree four polynomial function will have the fourth differences constant. The next thing is what relationship exists between the nth difference and the numbers in the polynomial. So that gets a little bit trickier to uh, type out here, so I'm going to write that with my pen. The nth difference, so if it's a degree four polynomial, it means the fourth difference would be constant, and its value would equal, so the, the fourth difference or the nth difference value will equal, we took the leading coefficient, which I could have just written as a subscript n, like we have in the past. So it's our leading coefficient for our polynomial multiplied by n, where n is our degree, factorial. Okay, so n is our degree, and then this symbol means factorial. Okay, so that exclamation mark is factorial. Factorial. And n, that is our degree value. So fourth degree, the n would be four. Um, and n factorial, n factorial just means take the number n, multiply it by the number before it, which is n take away one, multiply it by the number before that one, which is the n take away two, and go all the way, dot, 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 all the way down until you get times three, times two, times one. Okay, so five factorial, for example, example, five factorial will equal five times four times three times two times one. Okay, just to remind you what that is. All right, I'm going to start a new video to finish off this lesson.